Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively new study that focuses on one somewhat unusual proposition, the proposition in regards to neutron stars. And here, the researchers behind this study make a pretty strong argument for the existence of unusual, almost like atmospheric clouds orbiting around neutron stars that are actually made out of something entirely different. They're made out of axions. Hypothetical particles proposed as an explanation for a lot of mysteries in physics, including dark matter. And so in other words, the researchers behind the study suggest that pretty much most neutron stars out there contain unusual atmospheres made entirely out of dark matter particles. And the argument they make is pretty strong. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with axions. So what are they, and why do so many scientists believe they exist? And well, axions were initially proposed by the famous Frank Wilczek, an American physicist who won the Nobel in 2004 and who's essentially an expert in everything when it comes to particle interactions. And sometimes around 1978, he proposed that in order to solve one of the biggest problems in physics, the strong CP problem, the problem that stems from the observation that the strong force, one of the fundamental forces, preserves charge parity symmetry, CP symmetry. And this is despite the fact that nothing actually requires it to do so. And so here the question was, why is CP symmetry respected when it comes to the strong force? Now I know this is quite a loaded question and quite a lot of information, but you can learn a little bit more about this in some of the links and some of the videos in the description. In essence though, the axions offered an elegant solution to this puzzle and represented a super light particle with a spin of zero that would suddenly offer the solution to this charge parity symmetry. But within just a few years, researchers realized that this can actually also explain a lot of other problems. These axions also appeared as an extremely common feature in the string theory, and they seem to arise in various extra dimensions as those dimensions become more compact. But much more importantly, in terms of this research, they also became the leading candidate for the explanation involving dark matter, the invisible substance that seems to make up most of the mass in the universe, but that seems to not really interact with anything except for gravitational effects. And so in this case, the axions could potentially explain a lot of things all at once. But over time, scientists realized that axions can also actually be affected by extremely powerful magnetic fields. Specifically, they can be produced in regions with extremely strong and varying electromagnetic fields, such as, for example, around polar caps of various neutron stars. Likewise, sometimes axions can be converted to photons, but photons with a lot of energy. And so when exposed to these very powerful magnetic fields, sometimes we expect these axions to basically become X-ray photons. And not so long ago, we've actually discussed one of these potential detections coming from extremely famous neutron stars known as the Magnificent Seven. But so far, this detection has not been confirmed by others. Nevertheless, it was still there, even though it was kind of preliminary. And so essentially, to discover these axions, neutron stars have always been the main target. They created the perfect environment. As a matter of fact, some of these neutron stars, especially magnetars, would basically be axion factories. They would be generating so many of these axions that technically, even using modern telescopes, we should be able to detect them eventually. But this was obviously still a hypothetical proposition and even a hypothetical particle. Nobody knew if they even existed. Nevertheless, even their name, axion, is basically a kind of a play on words. They're named after a brand of soap that's actually still available in the stores, and that's because their existence was really supposed to clean up the problems in physics. Problems with axions, problems with the strong forces, and the problems in the string theory. But because they're proposed to be extremely light in mass, they would be practically impossible to detect naturally. So we can really only find them by looking at interactions with something else, such as powerful magnetic fields. But neutron stars contain everything we need. Extreme densities, extreme magnetic fields, and they're also small enough in size that everything around them kind of stands out. And so for several years, researchers basically speculated that many of these neutron stars should be spewing out axions left and right, but mostly by producing specific types of X-rays, which is essentially what the study by Bushman and his team was trying to describe back in 2021. But this new study that just came out by Dion Nordhios takes a slightly different approach. Here the assumption is that 
it might be easier to find axions that actually get stuck around neutron stars because they potentially form extremely dense clouds. In some sense, so dense that we can even refer to these as dark matter atmosphere. And that's because as a lot of these axions are produced, many of them get captured by the star's gravity and eventually get stuck in this orbit for possibly millions of years. And that's because these magnetic fields are so powerful, they can easily overproduce many, many of these axions that eventually get stuck for a long time. And even though some of them do escape, most don't. But if they don't actually do anything except for basically orbit around the neutron star, they would still be very difficult to detect. However, we know that neutron stars occasionally do go through certain changes. For example, a magnetar can shut down, reducing its magnetic field dramatically, which will very likely result in a massive axion escape and thus a sudden X-ray burst. But these events are kind of rare. There is, however, one event that's not rare, and we refer to these as pulsar glitches. And while approximately 6% of all pulsars known to us tend to sometimes accelerate their spin, which we refer to as a glitch. This has actually been explained as a type of a star quake, and it dramatically shifts the conditions around the star for at least some time. And that of course includes the magnetic field. And so during such an event, we do expect a sudden and dramatic shift of axions around the pulsar, which a lot of different telescopes we use today can technically pick up and identify. So for example, telescopes like LOFAR can monitor known pulsars for these transient events, and then combine them with observations in the X-rays to find out if maybe we're actually detecting axions, or axions that turn into photons. And so basically in this study, scientists propose a definitive way to identify these clouds and to obviously find out if axions really exist. Here the implication is that we have all the technology needed, including all of the telescopes, to make these detections real and to potentially finally discover axions once and for all and thus discover the dark matter. And that's because these axions, if they're real, should be producing these axion clouds around every single object that possesses high density and powerful magnetic fields. So basically pretty much every neutron star and maybe even certain black holes. Possibly even certain white dwarfs. And because this would be very dense environments that can be easily disturbed by minute changes in the magnetic field, even a tiny pulsar glitch should actually produce necessary results. And that's of course on top of some kind of a long-term signal that should be produced as a lot of these axions escape over time. And so in some sense there are two possible ways to discover if this is real. Either by observing these glitches or sudden changes or by discovering some kind of a long-term emission. And likewise we could maybe even find something by studying various binaries. Either binary neutron stars or neutron stars that have some kind of a different partner. So here we also expect different interactions and thus different observational signals. Something that's basically beyond predicted values. But in order to understand this, and obviously in order to discover and confirm this, this might require additional branches of sciences, including potentially plasma physics, that could provide explanation for how this neutron star cloud acts over time, and for how it seems to grow over time, eventually changing and becoming either denser or more compact. So basically this is just a first proposition and a first assumption, but it will obviously take years to see if this is actually true. Nevertheless, this proposition is super interesting and right now provides us with one of the best ways to discover if dark matter is axions and obviously if axions even exist. But until there are some additional discoveries or someone else finds something else super cool, check out previous videos about this topic in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.